concept at SugarX Global, which is really important. And it's really helpful and really practical. And I think it makes a huge difference for those that are um, using it in their recovery. And it's actually something we got from Bitten Johnson, who got from her mentor, Craig Nacken. And it's this red dog, blue dog concept. So quickly, let's just recap. The red dog is your disease. It's the part of your brain that's actually trying to kill you. And your blue dog is your prefrontal cortex in the front of your head. It's like where your thinking logic comes from. And it's trying to protect you and keep you safe. Okay. So you have these two entities that are sort of dueling it out in your mind. And there you are, right? You're a blank slate. And the red dog is trying to get you to use. It's trying to get you to do things that hurt you and hurt others and don't get you good results. And the blue dog is trying to get you the results that really matter for yourself, like the things that really work, um, the things that enable you to practice really good self-care because recovery is really good self-care, right? So here's the problem. Left to your own devices, the red dog's the loudest in the room. Right, and and when you have people sit down and do this really cool exercise, where we have some person whispering in one ear, another person whispering in another ear, telling them, and basically one represents the red dog, one represents the blue dog, they always hear red dog more. Like they always hear the red dog. It's a more familiar tape. The pattern is more familiar to us because we've been dealing with the red dog for so many years. And oftentimes, when we enter into recovery, the blue dog is really quiet really quiet um, and he's and he's beaten and he's a little broken he's still there and he's ready to help out but he just needs a little bit of encouragement so that's what this video is about it's about training your blue dog because he can't train himself and that implies practice we're going to have to work on blue dog we're going to have to feed blue dog throughout the day we're going to have to encourage him we're going to have to get good results and remind ourselves that we got good results when we did the thing that we thought would work we have to just be that booster in the corner in blue's corner and one of the ways that we do that is just repetition we just keep doing the things that keep working right um and and we look at things that don't work and we let go of them Right, Because the things that don't work ultimately feed the red dog. The red dog uses those things against you. He's like, yeah, remember you did that? You spent all the time and energy on that day? Didn't work, did it? Right, He's going to be there kind of poking you and prodding you. So we have to keep blue dog up to speed. Now, we can't just feed blue dog and ignore red dog. That doesn't work. Right, it, It's not just a one-sided event here. We have to make sure that we're dealing with blue dog but also knowing where red dog is going. And then what we can do is we can train Blue Dog based on where Red Dog is going, and we can learn, right? That's what we do. We make mistakes. We learn. So we don't have to repeat the same mistakes over and over again. Thank goodness. So the Blue Dog can be like, oh, I see where Red Dog's going. Oh, I know what worked last time. I did this. Or remember I did that and it didn't work? Let's try something different. All right, so we need to be there to do the training, to put in the reps. I mean, you don't just go to the gym once and you get strong. No, you've got to put in your reps. You've got to put in the time. You've got to put in the effort. You've got to repeat patterns of behavior so that they become automatic so they can automatically give you results. And that's what training the blue dog is about so you can get the results that you want in your recovery. Give me a comment below and let me know what you think.